So what happens whenever we have negative exponents or we divide with exponents? So first off, if I have a to the negative one or any value to a negative one or negative exponent, we always want to represent our answers with positive exponents. So we need to fix that. So first off, a to the negative one, we actually take the reciprocal of and it becomes one over a. So the act of taking the reciprocal or moving it across the fraction bar is gonna give us a positive exponent. So what if it's not negative one? What if it's a to the negative b? Well, moving it across the fraction makes it positive, so we'd say one over a to b. Now sometimes we may end up with negative exponents in the denominator, but we still follow the same process. Again, it's not that it automatically moves down, it just takes the reciprocal and moves across the fraction. So one over a to the negative one just becomes a to the first, because it moved to the top. One over a to the negative b becomes a to the b, kind of over one, we don't need to write it, because it moved to the top. So we're gonna play with that and we simplify. The other thing we have to look at is the quotient rule. The quotient rule is similar to the product rule that we had. And the product rule we multiplied, or when multiplying separate terms, we added the exponents. For the quotient rule, let's think of if we moved this a to the c up, it'd become a negative exponent, kind of like what we're saying here. If we did that and followed the, the product rule, we would then have a to b minus c. And that's actually what we do. We subtract exponents. So anytime it's a quotient rule, subtract the exponents. We could go a little bit further. Let's look at it. What if it was a to the fifth over a to the third? Now in this case, I, I could subtract and do five minus three. But we also can say, well, this means we have five a's over 3 a's. And if I did a over a, that would be equivalent to 1, this would be equivalent to 1, and this would be equivalent to 1. So in this case we're left with a squared, which you're looking at going, yeah, I, I get it, it's 5 minus 3. But sometimes it's easier to take the approach of saying, well, which side, top or bottom, has more, and by how many? So essentially that's finding the difference and leaving with the terms we have. So something like a to the fourth over a to the seventh, instead of having to look at subtracting four minus seven, we could say, well, the bottom one has more, it has three more, and that allows us to simplify. So we use both of those approaches as we go through simplifying with our negative exponents and division. So, in the first step we have to look at coefficients. The coefficient we have here is four over one. That's gonna simplify to just still be four over one. But let's look at the x's, x to the negative third and x to the fourth. So instead of thinking of subtraction, I'll off to the side write this, x to the negative third, x to the fourth, I could write this as negative three minus four, because it's a subtraction problem, and that gives me x to the negative seven, which follows the negative exponent rule, we get one over x to the seventh, which means it does go here. Let's throw a different way to look at it though. Anytime I get a negative exponent, well what if I wanted to make it positive? So if I took the negative three and moved it down, I then have x to the fourth and x to the positive three, which becomes one over x to the seventh, same thing. A little bit easier than having to worry about the knowing the negative rule and knowing the quotient rule. So what if we add y to the negative four over y to the negative two? I wanna make them both positive, and it's that idea of taking the reciprocal, so it becomes y squared on top and y to the fourth on the bottom. The bottom has two more, so y squared on the bottom. Other ways to look at it, that is the equivalent of doing negative four minus negative two, which would be the same as negative four plus two, which is negative two, which is why the y squared ended up down there. Also, if I'm pretty good with my understanding of negatives and positives, if I said negative four and negative two on the number line, which one has more? Well, negative two is further over in the number line. It is two units more, so the bottom has more. Whatever approach you use to get to it, we just need to get that y squared in the denominator. Now, z is a little bit different. They're already positive, so we can kind of take the quicker approach of saying top or bottom, the bottom has more, it has four more, so that is z to the fourth. 
We'll clean this up and write it as 4 over x to the seventh y squared z to the fourth. Our goal, positive exponents, everything simplified down. All right, so our next one, we have 4x to the third, y to the sixth, and the quantity of negative two, and then x squared and y to the negative three. Let's kind of go through and think about the uh, negative exponents and what that does first. This whole term with the negative, I can move that underneath the fraction. y to the negative third, I can move up. So this becomes, the y to the third went up, the x squared's still there, but now that quantity of 4x to the third, y to the sixth squared came down. And now it's still squared and it's not gone yet. We still have to take care of that, but we've at least made it positive. So next I'm gonna take the power rule and we're gonna go four squared is 16 x to the third squared multiply is x to the sixth because I have three times two and y to the sixth squared is y to the twelfth. Now we're going to put everything together, get our final answer, get the x's, get the y's put together and make sure all the exponents are positive. First off I have my coefficient that 16 is going to hang out in front. I have x's, x squared and x to the sixth is going to leave me x to the eighth in the denominator and then y to the third and y to the twelfth, there is nine more on the bottom, so I go y to the ninth. Let's throw a one up there to hold the value, so that is one over 16, x to the eighth, y to the ninth. Next problem, we're gonna look at the power rule first. So I'm gonna go two squared is four, x to the third squared is x to the sixth. Down here I have a negative four, x squared, y to the negative two. I haven't done anything with that yet, but I've took care of the power rule. Now let's look at negative exponents. So the y to the negative two needs to come up and become a y squared. To get us here. So now I've cleared out all the negative exponents. Let's go through and finish it off. I have the coefficients out in front. 4 over negative 4 is just negative 1. I'm not going to put the negative down here. I'll put it at the top. x to the 6th over x squared has 4 more on top. So we're going to write x to the 4th on top. y squared is the only y squared. So that stays there. So our answer is negative x to the 4th y squared. The problem next to it, I could go into the power rule first, but I'm going to throw out the idea of, well, what about the negative exponent? Why don't I get rid of that first? And not so much the square, just the negative part of it. We said earlier that it's reciprocal, taking it. Well, if I have a fraction, I can take the reciprocal of the whole thing. So let's go 3x to the third on top, 4xy on the bottom, and now it's a positive 2. That is the, op the option of going with the reciprocal different idea than what we've said so far because really it was just a a to the negative one becomes one over a but we could take the reciprocal of the whole thing another thing I could do first before the power rule because power rule is really exponents in order of operations I can do what's inside the parentheses I got this x to the third over x I'm gonna simplify that first make it x squared on top to get rid of the x on the bottom now I have less terms to worry about, and it's gonna be less um, work I have to finish with. So now we're gonna do power rule. We have three squared is nine. X squared squared multiplying becomes X to the fourth, and then four squared is 16, and that's Y squared. This way it saved me from having to worry about a negative exponent when I go in and simplify and have that um, to simplify more. Took care of it, less terms to work with. Now. Next one, I'm gonna do the power rule first. So that's gonna become 25 a squared b squared times three a to the third b. I have three a to the negative one and then negative one here squared becomes a positive one, don't forget that. And then that's gonna be b to the sixth. Now I don't need to write the positive one, but it would be there. So I see I have a negative exponent here. I'll move that up and kind of put some things together. So I have 25 and three is 75. The three on the bottom comes along. A squared, A to the third, and the one coming up becomes A to the sixth. 
b's I have 3, I'm left with on the bottom b to the 6th. So now we finish the problem, 75 over 3 actually just becomes 25 over 1. a to the 6th is the only a left, that's going on the top, and then I have 1b on top because it's b to the 3rd over b squared. So my actual answer, I don't need to write as a fraction, is 25a to the 6th b. Next problem, I'm going to try to get rid of that negative exponent first. So I'm going to take the reciprocal, make it y squared over x times, now we're going to do power rule here, x to the negative 4 over y squared. Now this is multiplication, so I can put them together, y squared times x to the negative 4 over x times y squared. This negative 4 is going to come down, so that's going to leave me with 5x's in the denominator, along with this one. And then y squared over y squared really just becomes 1, so my final answer is 1 over x to the fifth. Our next one has negative exponents. It's on the inside, has them on the outside, but this right here we like because anything to the zero power becomes 1. So this whole fraction is now 3p to the negative 2q to the negative 1 over 1 because it's gone. Now, the negative exponent, let's take the reciprocal, make it positive, so that's p, 3p to the negative 2q. Still have a negative exponent there, so p squared comes up and 3q stays on the bottom. So we get an answer of p squared over 3q. Last problem, I'm going to take care of the negative first by doing the reciprocal. I'm not going to do the, the cube or the third power yet. First, going to get things switched. Now that's a positive 3. I'm also going to clean up some of the variables because top and bottom both have A's, um, top and bottom both have C's, so let's clean that up. 5 and 3 are going to stay put for now. But A over A squared leaves me with 1A on the bottom. B, there's only, one, there's only a B to the 5th on the bottom, so that stays. C to the 5th and C to the negative 2. The negative 2 comes up and makes it C to the 7th. So now we're going to put that to the 3rd. We have 5 to the 3rd, C to the 21st, 3 to the 3rd, A to the 3rd, and B to the 15th. We'll multiply out. 5 to the 3rd is 125, C to the 21, 3 to the 3rd is 27, A to the 3rd, B to the 15th.